30 life lessons I learned in 2020. Number one, death and catastrophe is imminent. The death, illness, or debilitating deterioration of the health of my parents is imminent within the next day to 15 years if they keep their current lifestyle. Disaster, death, and suffering is coming. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Are you prepared for those dark days ahead? Who will you be and who do you want to be when catastrophe arrives? Number two, others aren't less worthy than you because they live differently. You don't need to deploy your thesis of how to live onto others just because you see they're not living your version of an optimal life. Just because someone doesn't have similar standards to you doesn't mean they haven't attained their own success, meaning and fulfillment. Lead by example, and if they want to help, they'll put their hand out or follow the standard of excellence you lead your life by. Stop judging others for their standards. Just live your standards. Number three, don't oppose others brazenly. You don't need to oppose others whose way of life you disagree with. Pick your battles. Ask yourself, can you provide meaningful conjecture that will positively move you and the other forward towards meaningful psychological enrichment? Number four, bear your soul more. Quote, you always fix everyone else's problems, but you don't stay long enough to let them know your own insecurities, vulnerabilities, and who you are. So you think you're connected to all these people, but they don't feel connected to you. They just trust you can help them out, end quote. People need people. The deeper connections you can cultivate with others, the more fulfilling and rewarding your life will be. So sit down and take time to engage with people to show them who you are by expressing what makes you hesitant, vulnerable, and uncomfortable. Number five, talk less, be more. If you want the world around you to be better, then be better. Quote, what you are speaks so loud that the world can't hear a word you're saying. End quote. Number six, don't work with people who aren't demonstrating commitment to help themselves. You can't help people who don't want to help themselves. So it comes down to, what are you willing to accept? What are your standards? Quote, you can't force someone to see their gold mine of potential if they can't see it within themselves first. Number seven, it's not always better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Relying on others to pay you for forgiveness for your conscious errors of judgment in an effort to find loopholes to make your life easier is not safe, smart, or thoughtful. It's selfish and doesn't consider the other person or groups of people that are affected by that decision. Number eight, when overwhelmed with tasks, go on the offensive and run the sprint. List all the tasks you have ob obligated yourself to do. Rank them in order of significance. Ask, what is the lead domino task that will make others easier, less of a cognitive burden, or relevant? These are the tasks I usually procrastinate on the most. Complete those first. Dedicate a block of free undisturbed time to complete a minimum of two of these tasks per day, or run the sprint and complete them all. Number nine, treat your skin like an organ you care for. Niacinamide plus zinc, jojoba oil, and aloe are very healing mix. Also, understand the skin takes weeks to heal to replace new tissue. Breathe and be patient. Number 10, your personal legend comes before everything. I must never give up or devalue my deepest purpose to placate another. If I do, ultimately everyone suffers in the end, and my purpose for being smolders. When I live in accordance with my personal legend, a harmony between nature and potential coalesce, and I can be better for myself so I can be better for others. Number 11, don't live as if you're going to die today or later. Do both. I would, will, and must live with the gratitude and vigor that everything can be taken away. At the same time, I must also seek and attain betterment for myself while serving others via my pursuit of excellence for the future. Number 12, to be good means you understand you can be evil. I must confront the unlimited discomfort of my most inner darkest thoughts. Not run from them, but sit with them, befriend them, and make peace with them. Quote, no tree, it is said, 
can grow to heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. End quote. Number 13. Live as if you're everyone. What if I live knowing I would embody the life, heart, and soul of every person that has and will ever live? This would mean every time I hurt someone, I am hurting myself. Every act of kindness I've done, I've done to myself. So treat everybody as if they were you. And you'd probably be better for it. Number 14. Be kind over being right. The value of kindness far supersedes being right. I don't always have to say what I think. I'm learning that when someone is in pain, they don't always need to hear the truth. They don't always need to hear how to fix their problem. They often just need to be heard and acknowledged. That is being kind. Number 15. To maximally preserve muscle during caloric scarcity slash deficit. Resistance drain consistently. Consume 1.8 to 2.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. 0.9 grams of fat per kilogram of body weight. And fill the rest out in carbohydrates. Sleep as much as your body desires and you can. Number 16. More muscle equals more food and easier abs. You need appreciable amounts of muscle mass to earn the right to eat a lot of food, have a high basal metabolic rate, and more importantly, be lean with high body fat percentage. You can be lean and have a six-pack with 10 to 20% body fat, but you just need a large amount of muscle bulk to present itself through that subcutaneous fat. Number 17, plan the time and energy commitment of your studies. In any future formal studying commitments, such as university, assess the workload ahead of time relative to your time commitments and responsibilities to minimize future overwhelm, frustration, and stress. Number 18, my COVID experience is not your COVID experience. Everyone is experiencing varying levels of turmoil or lack of, which predisposes their perspective and risk assessment of a pandemic, resulting in stark perspective differences between individuals across cities across the world. Number 19, be free of all of life's games and you will be free. Play the games that make my life better, more effective and have utility. If it doesn't, why am I doing it? The reason to win the game is to be free of it. You free yourself from all games by finding and pursuing your igaki. Make sure every game in my life is chosen out of thoughtfulness, careful consideration, and solid reasoning instead of obligation, necessity, or lack of something. If I beat enough of the right games, I can be free of all of them. Number 20. Time is life. My time is my life. Resentment, overwhelm, and anxiety can bubble up when you are doing things because you feel you have to instead of because you choose and want to. Number 21. If you ever have a family, create routine time for undistracted family dinners. Dedicated family dinners are important for cultivating connection and communication and will be a mandatory part of my family if I decide to have a family. Number 22. Minimize and control the inputs or you will chase check box ticking forever. Things to do will pile up unless I control the inputs better. Emails, videos, podcasts, articles, research. Be more selective and strict about the videos, podcasts, articles, and emails you consume. Number 23. You probably don't need to finish your degree. A. I don't need to continue my degree in order to further gain comprehensive and practical foundational knowledge. I have sourced a multitude of other educational resources that have been more efficient for learning, time, cost, and energy. B. A degree is an expensive ticket to credibility and authority, and for me, can be attained by other means through in-the-dirt practical results and knowledge. C. You technically don't need it to open any doors because you're already in the room doing what you want to do. Except technically a visa. Number 24. If you need a home loan, don't try and make it look like you earn less to pay less tax. You need to make it look like you make enough money on your next tax return in order to demonstrate to the bank that you are eligible for the loan amount you desire. No one told you this before. So this is a very adult lesson that you suddenly learn. Number 25. Quote, no obstacle in front of me is more powerful than the will I have to conquer it. End quote. My will is my superpower, and with it, I gain a mental edge by using it to dive into the depths of my soul, facing my shadows and figuring out who I am. 
My will equals my ability to exceed boundaries, show up consistently, and work smart and hard. Through this, I gain the courage to conquer anything I set my eyes on. Not with the arrogance or delusion of guaranteed success, but with the feeling inside that my will has the power to drive me to conquer the mountains that face me. Number 26. You're capable of more than you prepare for. You don't always need to lean on the crux of feeling like you have to optimally prepare yourself to perform and be great. You ran nearly half a marathon with a friend when you never even ran half the distance before in your life. Remember that. Number 27. My health does not have to be 99% perfect adherent. My life, diet, and nutrition does not have to be 99% perfect in order to achieve a very high excellent state of performance, health, and wellness. Adopting a 80-20 ratio as a maintenance is enough to satiate my joyous desires and spontaneity of life while being consistent on the base foundational habits that provide the foundation for my health. Number 28. Food is a gateway to connecting with others and experiencing joy. The experience of sharing good food with good people is one of my favorite things to do that brings me joy and allows space to connect deeply with others. So keep doing it because it's a worthwhile investment. Number 29. Life is about people. Life is dramatically enhanced when you share it with others you love, care, and enjoy. Prioritize these experiences and people more because you probably won't wish you worked harder, more, or longer but you probably will wish you spent more time and said yes to more enriching experiences with people that bring you joy and light to your life. Number 30. Life isn't just about productivity and betterment. Not everything I do has to be about the pursuit of betterment, productivity, ambition, and progress. The life I'm living is not just solely dedicated to chasing excellence anymore and being better every day. It's also about finding peace and joy in the simple pleasures of life and chasing my own curiosity. And so those are my 30 life lessons I learned in 2020. I encourage each and every one of you to not try and adopt these into your own life. These are mine. They mean a lot to me because I learned them through the fire of experience. Instead, make your own list. Reflect and review on your last year to see what you learnt. Because only then will you be able to really actualize the potential that you have to embody those lessons continually throughout your life. 